Hello and welcome to the latest in the Casino Beats 100 Pathway series and what is a first live in person edition. So no pressure on my guest, Mr. Robin Hutchison, director at Square in the Air. Thanks for joining us. Thanks for having for me. taking time out of a, a busy schedule at the summit in Barcelona to do this. So let's start, we'll go way back when. Robin uh, in, is in school, two questions in one here. What was your dream job when you was in school? And upon leaving education, what were the kind of feasible paths that your career could have gone? So my burning ambition as a child was to be in the army, specifically in the Royal Marines. That's so big. I was obsessed with, and still am actually, the Second World War when I was a kid. Uh, I watched every war film going and I was basically an action man uh, in child, <laughs> child form. Uh, and I went to university, I did history at university in Liverpool, uh, loved my history and went along to a recruitment sergeant in the Royal Marines at Liverpool University and he put me off to be honest because I wasn't 100% certain that I wanted to be committed to him what have you and as it happened I went into journalism instead uh, but I've long thought that it was a missed opportunity but the likelihood is I'd have gone to Iraq and Afghanistan and stuff like that and so my slightly um, mythologized view of the army might have been quite quickly uh, you know, knocked aside, shall we say. So I think I probably dodged a bullet quite literally. <laughs> and what, when you was leaving school, did journalism become the immediate uh, path? Yeah, I had a, a f but my father-in-law, he had a really good friend who was a, a brilliant 1960s and 70s tabloid journalist, the, the great tradition of British red top journalism. And I used to play snooker with him, uh, a lovely guy called Frank Curran, who sadly is no longer with us. Um, as fond as most journalists of the uh, time were of, of, of a few pints and a few more pints. Uh, but he sort of put me onto journalism and, uh, as I said, I did history at university. And then soon after that, I did an NCTJ course, National College of Training Journalists in Sheffield, and uh, fell into my sort of local uh, news agency, Raymond's Press Agency. Uh, and uh, yeah, became a journalist soon after. Local journalism, we have that in common. Yep. So fast forward, we enter the industry. How, how did that come about? Yeah, so I moved from um, regional uh, press uh, to uh, Fleet Street. Um, well, via Scotland, actually. I moved up to an agency in Scotland in, in Glasgow for a while, and then um, moved to Fleet Street. My, my then girlfriend, now wife, was in London, and uh, I did some shifts on the Daily Mirror, the Daily uh, and the Sun, I should say, and then I, I, uh, I landed up on the Daily Express and the Daily Star, uh, so where Frank and my mentor, had been, I was there, and then, because of the sort of um, the type of audience we had, the readers we had, betting stories were, you know, ten a penny. And I used to do lots of really good stories with Hills and Labrooks and Coral and all those guys. You know, the wackier end of the the betting story, um, big bets, big wins, wacky ones, as I say. Um, and they uh, Labrooks asked me to come and work for their PR team, uh, which was again back in the sort of regional media, which is where I started. But then I graduated on doing when novelty betting really took off with, um, you know, a Big Brother and uh, I'm a Celebrity and all that sort of stuff. So I did that, and then I did football and tennis and all the other sports as well. So it was a great entry into it from coming from the news side to the PR side, if you like. So it's got square in the air, huge growth, and all the US is a big target. How do you kind of strategize going about that? Like, what are the ambitions? How do you kind of make a a big impact? That's a very good question. Um, and, you know, it's something we're trying to evolve at the moment. When I joined 11 years ago now at Square in the Air, we were all about written media. We were all about press releases and thought leadership and interviews, and we still are. And you guys obviously take quite a lot of that content, but just as you've changed and you've moved and you're now doing video and audio and that sort of stuff, we're doing something similar. Um, and we're trying to make sure that people can still use uh, the industry media and still have a great route to market via them, but also do their own stuff as well, whether that's via social media, their own websites, etc., and their own production of content. And I think that's where we come in and hopefully offer something different. But as you say, the US is a big part of what we do now as well. We've got a five strong team there. And ultimately we're moving as the industry is moving and, and trying new geographies and that sort of thing. So really excited about SBC Rio next March, see what we can do down there in Latin America. Uh, we've got Miami before that obviously as well. Um, and this show is going to Lisbon. So let's see what that holds in you know, 12 months time. But 
as we evolve or as the industry evolves, we need to evolve with it. And I think ultimately, you know, we need to make sure that the clients that we have and the prospective clients that we want to talk to, that we're providing PR and marketing services that uh, that suit them and suit their readers and listeners and, and viewers. Um, and so that the uh, the trick, I think, is to stay ahead of the game and make sure that you're moving with the times at the same time. Yeah, easier said. So you've touched on the evolution of Square in the Air. Let's look at the industry as a whole. You've been in the industry for quite a number of years, as you've just touched upon. What are the, the key changes you've seen? And this can be for the better or for, and or for the worse. Yeah, I think the main thing that I can see as a huge difference is when I came into the industry to now is responsible gaming. Uh, and I know that's a sort of emotive thing to say and a trendy thing to say, but this industry paid lip service to that when I, when I joined it sort of 15 years ago. I remember being on the Ladbrokes in the Community Charitable Trust, it was called, which was a kind of window dressing exercise, truthfully, um, to put money back into communities. We did work with a Coalfields Regeneration Trust, and we were doing it to make ourselves look good. We weren't doing it because we needed to do it. And that's not having a go at Ladbrokes. Love Ladbrokes still to this day. Gave me my start in the industry. It was everyone, all operators, all suppliers. And I think now people genuinely believe that it's the right thing to do to have a sustainable industry, to make sure we're looking after the vulnerable, but also you know, helping people want to have a bet and, uh, and, and be able to, to get on what, whatever country that might be in. So um, I think the way that our attitudes have changed to what we do uh, is, is the most fundamental one, really. So to, to wrap up, we end in the same way we always do. If you could either tackle the industry with tackling one issue or if you could ask the industry one sole question what what would you want to ask well it's a follow-on from the last question actually because what i don't think we do well as an industry is champion ourselves we don't celebrate what we do we're not proud of what we do there are people out there in all countries and all walks of life who hate gambling right the antis the abolitionists i'll call them um, and we don't stand up for what we do enough we've got an awful lot of stuff to be proud of and um, we are fantastic contributors, whether it's tax, whether it's employment. Um, we are in an adult industry, and that's fine, uh, but we are responsible, uh, whether that's on the supplier side or the operator side increasingly, you know, and we, we should be proud of what we do. And I think we should stand up more to the people who want to ban gambling and who want us to be forced underground or whatever it might be. And we need to speak as a, as a unified voice as an industry. And someone who's passionate about PR and marketing, I'd like us to be a bit bolder, a bit prouder, and a bit louder about what, about what we do. Interesting, interesting insights. And there we have it. We're at the end of the first Life Pathways. Thanks again for giving up your time. Pleasure. Really appreciate it. Join us next time. <laughs>